Alright lads, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the OG bad boy of War Thunder, the IS-6. A tank that was so broken upon introduction, that Tiger 2 players are still seething to this day. This thing used to be battery rating 6.7, but it fought Tiger 2s pretty much constantly, and usually had a down to 5.7. While the armour thickness of the IS-6 isn't amazing, it's incredibly well sloped which made it basically an auto bounce zone for most of the APC BC rounds at those low battle ratings. As I've implied, even the Tiger II's mighty long barreled 88 couldn't penetrate it from the front, unless it went through the turret cheeks. And they are also incredibly well angled. Basically, if you remember the old R3 spam of them running around on the battlefield just killing you from anywhere, imagine one of those things were incredibly well angled with a 122mm gun, and that's how annoying they were. And to top it all off, you couldn't kill the bastard things. Anyway, the IS-6 is a Soviet premium tank in the 4th rank. It's also battle rating 7.3 for arcade battles, and 7.0 for realistic and simulator modes. Being a premium, I believe it costs you $50, and you also get 1000 golden eagles, and 7 days of premium time. Being a premium, to put this vehicle in your lineup, it'll only cost you 10,000 silver lions. And for the expert in qualifications, which are needed in my opinion to cut down that long reload speed, it's 510,000 silver lines for the expert, and 1,200 golden eagles for the ace. So lads, is the IS-6 still a good grinder, or is its title of being overpowered now long gone? If you'd like to know the answer to that question lads, stick around for the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back. The IS-6 is powered by an engine producing 700 horsepower. Combined with a vehicle's weight of 51.1 tons, it actually has a surprisingly good power to weight ratio of 13.7 horsepower per ton. This is by no means exceptional at battery rating 7.0, but for a heavy tank, it's actually surprisingly well off. We also have a top speed of 45 km per hour, which isn't the fastest, but due to its pretty decent acceleration, the tank does get around the map at a reasonable amount of speed. It also has a reverse speed of 18 km per hour. This means you can be fairly aggressive with the tank. If you overextend, you can get back to friendly lines pretty well. This gives you a lot of operational flexibility in the IS-6. And in many ways, it plays much more like a medium tank than it does a heavy. But, as we'll cover now, it certainly does have heavy tank levels of armour. The lower glacis of this tank is 120mm thick, and it's angled at 53 degrees. This gives it an effective thickness of 240mm. Safe to say that unlike most heavy tanks, the lower glaters of this tank is not a weak spot. Moving up the tank to the upper frontal plate and the armour around the driver's hatch is 100mm thick. Importantly though, it's angled at 65 degrees and for many APC BC rounds, this will be approaching the automatic bounce range. Anyway, this gives the armour an effective thickness of 199mm, pretty much 200mm thick. This is very impressive, and you will bounce a lot of rounds. However, against APDS and Heat FS, this armour protection is greatly reduced. And it's the same situation for the sides of the front of the hull. These are also 100mm thick. These are sloped at 62 degrees, but they're also angled, giving them over 300mm of effective thickness. While these are very impressive, and you will bounce around if you get hit here, but no good player is actually going to shoot you here, they're going to shoot you in the front of the hull or the next location, the turret front. The turret front is only 150mm thick, but it is relatively bouncy to be honest. There's lots of overlapping armour schemes and in the age of volumetric armour, who knows what will or what won't penetrate. But when the tank was introduced, and still to this day, the weak spot of the IS-6 is the front of the turret. Shoot this vehicle either side of the gun breach and you should go straight through. While the IS-6 is well protected against APC BC rounds, as I said, against chemical and the APDS rounds, it's actually not that well armoured at all really. So we've covered the mobility and the survivability, let's cover the firepower. While the IS-6 is armed with the 122mm D-30T gun, a gun that you should be familiar with if you've played the Soviet tech tree. When stock, this gun will reload every 21 seconds, which is a very long time on the battlefield, and with an ace crew, that drops down to 16 seconds. 
which to be honest isn't that great either. You can carry a total of 30 rounds into battle, and you don't have a first stage ammunition rack. Like all good Soviet heavies, it has absolutely no gun depression whatsoever, only minus 3 degrees, but to be fair, it does have a rather good 20 degrees of gun elevation. The turret traverse rate is also pretty poor, but that's a standard for a heavy tank. So while the tank is fast and well armoured, if an enemy does appear on your side, it can be quite hard to get that gun swung around onto target. But what is a gun without its ammunition? We have several choices available. First, we have the BR-471. This travels at 795 meters per second and contains 250 grams of explosive filler. This gives it very good post-penetration damage. It also has reasonable penetration characteristics. At point blank range, it can penetrate over 200 millimeters of armor and at 500 meters, it can still penetrate over 180 millimeters. We also have a second shell, the BR-471B. This is basically a clone of the first shell, except it has better angled penetration characteristics. This should mean that the round performs slightly better against angled armor, but it still has the same amount of penetration and post-penetration damage. We also have the OF-471. This is a high explosive round. It contains 3.6 kilos of TNT, which does give it reasonable penetration characteristics, with 37mm of penetration at all ranges and angles. But due to the real speed of this tank being at best 16 seconds, I would strongly advise against using high explosive rounds. Even though they can be useful against the SPAs and open top tank destroyers, the BR-471 APC-BC round works just as well in my opinion. So that covers the tank, let's go into the meta. Does this tank have a good lineup to back up its good performance? Well I run it at battle rating 7.0, which is a little bit lower than the traditional 7.3. I run it alongside stuff like the IS-3, the 2S-3M, the Howitzer, the ZSU-57-2, pretty good at anti-tank work, not real good SPA. You can also bring along the BTR-ZD, as well as a few other premiums, such as the T-44-122 and the T-34-100. For cash, you can bring along one of the various medium bombers that the Soviets have, as well as the SU-9 or the premium SU-11. This tank can also be up to 7.3 if you do want to bring along the slightly heavier Soviet lineup, including the BMP-1 and the T-54-1949. However, the battle rating 7.0 is somewhat of a sweet spot in the Soviet tech tree, so I do tend to play at battle rating 7.0. Anyway, this lineup is pretty good. I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Is the tank new player friendly? Well, it's got the mobility and the armor protection to be new player friendly in my opinion. It can be rather forgiving, especially against the heavier tanks in War Thunder. You can bounce quite a lot of traditional rounds. Again, if you're going up against an opponent which has Sabo or Heater Fest rounds, then it's not so survivable. But at 7.0, most of the tanks you will be fighting will be firing traditional solid shot or APC BC rounds. While the long reload time of the gun does knock it down a few points in my opinion, if you're a new player you do really want a fast firing decent gun, but I'd give it a 3 out of 5 stars. It's not the most new player friendly tank, but it does have pretty trolley armour which I guess could keep you alive if you're a new player that is a little bit inexperienced with battles. Does it have good value for money? Well, for the cost of 40 euros, you can't really complain too much. It's a hard hitting, fast, unsurvivable heavy tank, located at a pretty decent battle rating in a good rank of the Soviet tech tree. While I wouldn't say it's the best Soviet grinder, it's still a pretty good first spawn vehicle and certainly a decent backup. Because of that, I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Is this tank meta? Well, with its long reload speed, I'm inclined to say it isn't really. At battle rating 7.0, there are lots of other vehicles that are arguably better. They have similar levels of penetration and similar levels of post-pen damage. For example, at battle rating 7.0 in the Soviet tech tree, the same as the IS-6, we also have the T-44-100. This vehicle is much faster, and while not as heavily protected, it also has a 100mm gun, which can penetrate over 240mm of armour, and while it doesn't have as much explosive filler in its round, it's still an incredibly lethal weapon. At the battle rating of 7.0, the two determining factors really of the tank being very well on the battlefield, it's more its mobility and its ability to kill quickly. If you miss a shot in the IS-6 and you're down for at least 15 seconds, remember that is with an ace crew, it's more going to be around 20 to 18 seconds, so you are rather limited in your effectiveness. Because of this, I'd give the tank a 3 out of 5. And finally, and most importantly, how cool is this vehicle? Well, the tank does look pretty epic, it's got nice angled armour, but it doesn't really have that many camouflages available to it, and none of them stick out for me. So I'd give it a 3 out of 5. Anyway lads, thank you very much for watching this video. 
I still think that the IS-6 is a good premium grinder, although I do think there are better options available to it. While its gun performance certainly isn't as good as it was when it was first introduced to the game, its armour performance certainly is. Apart from the fact that you will get up tiered and face enemies with APDS and heat FS against the conventional APC-BC rounds, it's still an absolute god when it comes to armour performance. While I wouldn't say this tank is still in the meta, mainly due to its low fire rate, I'd still say it's worth picking up, especially if it's in a sale. While I'd say that the T-34-100 or putting a talisman on the T-44-100 is a better pick in my personal opinion, the IS-6 is still a nice grinder and you can still have a lot of fun with it. Anyway lads, if you enjoyed the video, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, and be sure to let me know in the comments down below what vehicles you guys would like to see reviewed next. Also, if you love the channel, consider becoming a channel member, like Nelly, Wolfie Fly, Joseph Metcalf, Tomster013, Tomato Soward, Just Someone, Dr. Bob, Deboa LX, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonso. Thank you very much for becoming members, lads, and I'll see you in the next review.